stunning pictures this morning out of Yellowstone. The Yellowstone River is at its highest elevation in more than 100 years. Yellowstone National Park is home to some of the United States' most spectacular natural features, wildlife, vegetation, and geological wonders. With its geothermal features, abundant animals, and over 2 million acres of sprawling wilderness, Yellowstone is one of North America's greatest assets. However, one of the park's officials has warned that this beautiful area will soon become a hazard. So, what exactly is happening in Yellowstone? What sort of warning have the authorities given about Yellowstone? In today's video, we bring you an updated announcement made by the officials of Yellowstone National Park regarding an impending natural disaster. In the western part of the United States, there's a giant that is fast asleep. Even though it occasionally stirs, it has not awakened from its slumber in nearly 70,000 years. When it does, however, it has the potential to roar and heave with force never seen before. Yellowstone National Park is a wildlife and forest preserve that stretches across the borders of Wyoming, Idaho, and Montana, and its name comes from the supervolcano that sits beneath the park. Magma, a form of molten or nearly molten rock, is located beneath the surface of the land above the Yellowstone supervolcano. As magma enters a magma chamber or reservoir approximately 6 to 10 kilometers beneath the park, the ground swells. The ground collapses as the magma cools and solidifies. Volcanologists have been keeping track of this activity since 1923, and they estimate that between 2004 and 2009, the ground rose by about 25 centimeters, or 9.8 inches. But in 2010, the land began to subside. Many scientists are concerned that Yellowstone might erupt soon due to its recent period of slow but steady increase. And if it does, people worry about how strong the next eruption might be. So, the big question is, what would happen if Yellowstone started shaking tomorrow? The answer is, we don't know yet. While scientists may not know exactly what to expect, they have an idea, and most say it's likely to be doomsday. Learning from the past Nonetheless, the recent underground activity level continues to feel speculation about the severity of an impending eruption. The last 10 years have seen the volcano expand at an unprecedented rate. There are also roughly 1,000 to 3,000 earthquakes per year in Yellowstone. The vast majority have a magnitude of 3 or less, making them barely perceptible. Still, the magnitude and frequency of these tremors tell scientists how quickly the magma chamber beneath the park is being filled. The park may be shaking and rattling more than usual because magma has been pumped into the reservoir. Increases in the frequency and intensity of earthquakes have not caused scientists to worry that the magma chamber is about to rupture. However, geologists have a hard time predicting Yellowstone's next move because no one has ever been around to observe and study every single thing that happens in Yellowstone. The volcano's ancient history can provide some insight. Yellowstone may have erupted three times within the last 2.1 million years. According to the available geological evidence, volcanologists say the eruption occurred at gaps of about 600,000 to 800,000 years. The park and thousands of kilometers of surrounding landscape are littered with artifacts from the last major event, which occurred roughly 640,000 years ago. Each of the previous eruptions spewed enormous amounts of volcanic ash, gas, magma, and other volcanic debris that covered most of the continental U.S. Materials have been uncovered in places like Louisiana. Every time this happened, the Yellowstone supervolcano swallowed everything in its path, including trees, mountains, and people. Calderas are depressions formed by this process. The Yellowstone caldera is another name for the Yellowstone supervolcano. If Yellowstone were to experience an eruption that produced a caldera, it would pose a significant natural risk. Hundreds of square kilometers of land in Washington and Oregon were scorched, and 56 people and thousands of animals were killed. But scientists say the last Yellowstone eruption was 1,000 times greater. Thousands of meters of deadly gases and ash were blasted into the air from the Yellowstone supervolcano during its last eruption thousands of years ago. About a third of the continent was probably in total darkness. Rapidly moving pyroclastic flows buried or shattered everything in their path. These flows are made up of hot, dry rock fragments and gases. Charred remains of the once beautiful landscape could be seen for kilometers where magma had erupted from the ground. The Yellowstone Caldera, which is 50 kilometers or 30 miles wide and 70 kilometers or 45 miles long, is physical evidence of the last eruption. 
The Lava Creek Tuff is a region that still displays the thick volcanic debris that remained after the eruption. Is it likely to erupt? The United States Geological Survey believes that a large eruption comparable to the previous one is unlikely. In point of fact, officials at the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory have stated that hydrothermal explosions or eruptions of steam in hot water rather than molten rock or lava flows are the most likely events that could take place in the future. Even while lava flows constitute a type of magmatic eruption, they're not nearly as destructive as the explosions that generate calderas. Lava flows do not cause instantaneous devastation. Rather, they seep slowly out of the ground over the course of days, months, or even years. Additionally, they're not very common. Approximately 70,000 years ago was the last time Yellowstone experienced lava flows. On the other hand, hikers can still observe tangible evidence of those eruptions in the shape of unique rock layers all along the trails in the park. Old Faithful is located close to the cliffs that encircle the Upper Geyser Basin, and this is where you can find some signs of more recent lava flows. Old Faithful is a geyser that is considered to be one of the most popular visitor attractions at the park. Today, Yellowstone is resting, and scientists are keeping a close eye on its every hiccup and cough in an effort to anticipate what it will do tomorrow. Yellowstone is currently in a state of hibernation. Nevertheless, this does not mean that it will never emerge from its slumber. The simmering force that lies beneath the park has been held in check for thousands of years. The questions of when and how much force remain unanswered. We're entering a time period in which it is predicted to become more unstable, and that is currently occurring. Dangers of Magma The explosive force that is produced by volcanoes comes from a substance called magma. The Yellowstone supervolcano has a significant amount of storage capacity hidden beneath the geyser-filled surface of the volcano. Magma, on the other hand, is a heterogeneous mixture that includes both solid and liquid components. As a result, not all of it is capable of erupting at once. In order for scientists to determine exactly how much geological goulash could potentially come out of the volcano in the event that it erupts, they applied a relatively new method to a collection of seismic data that was 20 years old. It was previously thought that there was a smaller amount of molten rock in Yellowstone's upper magma reservoir. However, the research, which was published on Thursday in the journal Science, comes to the conclusion that there is a far larger amount. Prior estimates showed that only about 10% of the magma was liquid, but their findings indicate that between 16 and 20% of the magma is liquid. There has been a very big magmatic system there for the past 2 million years, as stated by Brandon Schmant, a geophysicist at the University of New Mexico and one of the authors of the study. The speaker stated unequivocally that, quote, it does not appear that it is going away. That much is for certain. According to Michael Poland, who was not involved in the study but is the scientist in charge at the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, this does not imply that Yellowstone is in a more dangerous state than it was in the past. The latest investigation verifies that the Yellowstone Volcano's shallow reservoir is predominantly composed of solid material. Despite the fact that it is now believed that the volcano is somewhat more capable of exploding than it was previously believed to be. As a direct consequence of this, the possibility of any subsequent eruptions has drastically decreased. The findings of the study do not in any way imply that there has been an increase in the quantity of fuel for volcanic eruptions during the past few years. Dr. Schmant emphasized that, quote, we are not claiming that the system is changing, saying so numerous times throughout his presentation. The purpose of this is to acquire a clearer picture of what is currently down there, as well as what has been down there for some time. Yellowstone is not, by any sense of the imagination, a cowardly volcano. After the initial cataclysmic eruption that occurred 2.1 million years ago, there have been two subsequent huge eruptions, lots of moderately violent outbursts, and an infinite number of lava flows. In addition to this, there have been a number of incidents that range from mild to moderately violent. The most recent eruption took place 70,000 years ago and was characterized by flows with a viscosity similar to that of syrup. Because scientists are interested in forecasting what will occur with the volcano, they have been attempting to ascertain how much molten rock is close to the surface and where it could be found. Because crystalline barriers contain the melt, which is a buoyant and hot liquid, magma reservoirs are probably more analogous to labyrinths than they are to tanks of continually liquid rock. Magma reservoirs are thought to have formed over millions of years. When there's a bigger quantity of material that is melted, there's a greater possibility that a volcano will erupt. Previous work at Yellowstone revealed two magma reservoirs. 
one of Gloopy Magma 3 miles to 10 miles below the surface, and a far more enormous store of runnier magma 12 to 30 miles down. It was thought that roughly 2% of the deeper reservoir and 5 to 15% of the shallower reservoir were made of melts. That pretty much wraps this video up, guys. Thanks for watching. So, what are your thoughts about the possibility of a supervolcano eruption? Do you see it coming soon? Share with us in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe to this channel with a bell notification if you enjoy watching our content. We upload some awesome stuff here, which you will most certainly enjoy. Hit a like on this video and leave a comment below. See you guys in the next one.